Hi, this is Exploring with Emma and Stu. I'm Em. And I'm Stu. And today we've actually returned to Bungie. Uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, we actually visited the Aviation Museum here, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh, which was dedicated to RAF um, Bungie, which is also known as Flixton. And um, today we've actually come into the undergrowth, haven't we? Yes, we have. To see what actually remains of the World War II structures from the airbase. I see. Um, so we're quite excited. We don't know exactly what we're going to find, but we're on a bit of a hunt, aren't we? That's right. So, uh, Let's go and have a quick look what we can find in the forest. Mm -hmm. And if we find something, we'll give you some information if we can. The former World War II airfield of RAF Bungie was often known as RAF Flixton due to its closer proximity to the village. It was constructed in 1942 and was originally planned as a satellite base for RAF Hardwick. The airbase went on to be allocated to the United States Army Air Force and designated Station 125. Its main runway was 6,000 feet in length and as with most airfields from this period had technical, administrative and numerous domestic buildings which were dispersed around the base at various different sites to lessen the impact of an enemy air attack. And it's these remains of some of these structures that we will be on the hunt for in today's video. Now our air bases were actually surrounded by different communal sites and right now we are still in communal site 3 and the first thing we found is just over here and we're going to take it for a little look. Not exactly the biggest of structures but if you've watched our videos in the past you'll know this is actually a blast shelter which communal sites were covered in usually and they were basically a type of air raid shelter. They didn't have a roof or anything but the, the men would have come in here and they would have basically sheltered, I believe, <coughs> from uh, from any enemy attacks. So not in the best condition, this one. But uh, hopefully we might be able to find a better one for you. So we've come across some more remains. And like all communal sites, they needed power. And this particular structure was known as an M&E uh, Basically, it was a generator for the site. Um, this is very typical of what we always see, um, you know, a square or rectangle compound with a blast wall uh, in the middle here would have been the generators and wires and things but uh, it's quite, quite cool that we've actually found it so we're on the lookout for some more remains and we know we're in the right place because this area is completely covered in what i'm walking on which is actually concrete paths and tracks and these would have connected up all the different buildings so hopefully if we follow this particular track it might even take us hopefully to something else to show you so we're actually quite excited to have found really a quite a substantial building here unfortunately there's not any records of what this particular structure is as with many of the buildings around here they've sort of been lost in history um, but this one looks very much like some sort of storeroom. Uh, it's got two large doors. Uh, it could have even been some sort of garage or something. But uh, as you'll see in the footage, it's really quite impressive to look at. So as you can see, we're actually inside quite a substantial building here. And this was actually the gymnasium for the site, which we were hoping we might find. As you can see, it's, it's massive and vast. You can't really mistake it for anything other than the gymnasium. Um, we've never been in one before, so we're quite excited and we're going to take you for a little look around. This looks like it would have been the actual main way in for the people. Unfortunately that room is inaccessible, but it does have an original wooden door, which is quite cool to see. And then we'll have a look and see what we've got in here. Ah, well, I'm going to tell you what this very likely was straight away, if you just look to my left there. This was an illusions room. You can see where the toilet cubicles would have been on the floor there. So uh, I think we're gonna get out, out of this room and see what else we can find. So we've just been having a little explore of this gymnasium and there's all sorts of bits and pieces in here. This could have even been something to do with the actual apparatus that they had. Might be wrong, but still quite impressive. But. Uh, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to get Stu to take you for a proper look around and show you a little bit more detail what this quite amazing building actually has to offer.
so that was the gymnasium uh, quite excited to have found that as I keep yeah. saying <laughs> very impressive as you would have seen and um, actually right next door to that was another building which we didn't really go into much did we because it was no. quite close to somebody's house um, but I did take some really nice photographs of the in internal shots which I'm going to show you now um, we think it could have possibly have been a parachute store because it was very very tall and uh, and well, it looked like it could have been one, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> We're not experts when it comes to identifying these buildings, and a lot yeah. of them are um, unidentified, aren't they? Yeah, of course. But pretty cool, anyway. Yeah, so we're going to carry on now and, to see if we can crack. find something else. So we're just following these concrete tracks, which are completely and utterly littering this site, and we've just come to yet again another Emily pin generator room, uh, exactly the same as the one. That was just down there, so we're not going to show you in it, but we thought we'd give you a quick look anyway. So that was a look at communal site three of the airbase. Uh, we've had a really good rummage around the bushes, and we don't think there's anything else to find. But just here on the public footpath, we can't uh, ignore the fact that there is very clearly a World War II building here, which we're going to show you, as well as a few other buildings that we did come across and um, which we'll insert now for you if we find out what they are then we'll let you know but we're now off to another site to see what else we can find there so uh, we'll take you with us so this little building isn't actually on the maps but we're pretty certain that it's a picket post which is basically a guardhouse to the entire site which are often found on the operation sites like this one um, quite impressive that we managed to find it So the next site we've actually brought you to was the operations and administration block. And we believe this building that we're actually in right now was the operations building. Um, there's also many other buildings in this site too that we're in. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what they are now. Flying operations were controlled and monitored from this operations and administration site. Inside are many rooms, including telephone exchange, a radar room and wireless telegraphy room, plus offices for the commanding officer. Also, the buildings would have housed the operations planning room, with a large plotting table and map on the wall, as well as a plant and boiler room, plus offices for several airbase personnel. much smaller building here, but it's likely some sort of plant room and um, we believe there was a bit of an engine room next door. It's quite impressive because it's got a lot of features still left um, on the ceiling, ducts and things like that. Um, but yeah, really quite impressive and just next door we're going to show you a generator room we do believe. And here is the generator room. generator rooms that we saw in um, communal site 3 I think it was, this is pretty much exactly the same uh, although it's much more grown so we're not going to really show you around. But I think that's probably it for this site um, so I think we're going to get back and see if there's anything else to see, if there isn't we'll say goodbye. Despite a lot of the former airfield being returned back to agricultural use since the war, with a lot of its wartime buildings long since demolished, including its hangars and control tower, as well as much of its runway broken up. Many buildings can still be found scattered around the site, most of which are privately owned and still being put to some use today. Also, many original artefacts from the airbase can be viewed at the nearby Norfolk and Suffolk Aviation Museum in Flixton, which is free for the public to visit. So I think we've come to the end of our explore of the remains of RAF Bungie. That's it. Yeah, we've finished the video here at the War, Mem War Memorial they've put to the United States Army Air Force, isn't it? Yeah. Which is quite nice. Uh, we thought we'd bring you here to finish. But it's been a really good day, It's been a it? lovely day. We apologise about the wind because we're in a really windy area. Such a windy day, as um, always. <laughs> but we've got some drone footage and uh, it's been really good. So as from Exploring with Emma Stu, we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again yeah. next week. Thanks for watching. Oh.
Bye. this video please subscribe from the link above and if you want to see some more content from us we also have a patreon which you can join for just three pound a month there's loads of videos already on there with new ones every week uh, so we always appreciate your support so please take